Good morning. A very warm welcome to Grace Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Shul, and together with Pastor Hedrick, we are grateful you're with us today for worship on this third Sunday of Easter. We give a special welcome to everyone tuning in on the Bigfoot Country Legends Radio Network and all who are watching our live stream today. A few uh, brief announcements before we begin what will be a very full and joyful day today. Uh, we uh, have a three baptism day here at Grace. And now at 9 o'clock, Land McShay was baptized by Pastor Hetrick. And at this service, uh, after the sermon, we'll have uh, Drew Schubert. There's Drew, looking very handsome today. And a little lady I've come to know as my granddaughter, Addison Dellert, who's having a bottle. You know, she's, we don't want a hangry baby up here at the baptismal font. Friends, uh, as we pray uh, for these newest members of the body of Christ, it is a good day to remember and give thanks for your baptism and the grace and love of Jesus that sustains us in this life and the life to come. Looking ahead to next week, uh, we've got uh, Super Wednesday on Wednesday, predictably enough, at 5.15. We'll have a wonderful meal in Harkins Hall, and then I hope you'll uh, come upstairs to Fireside where I'm continuing my deep dive into the first chapter of John's Gospel, joined by uh, uh, Father Deacon Spiritus Papa Vasileo, uh, who's the Archdeacon of the uh, Metropolitan of Limassol in Cyprus. He's coming to us live from Cyprus as we explore John's Gospel in art and architecture. Father Deacon Spiridon is a trained architect. Also want to just uh, have a save the date uh, out in front of you, May 5th. That will be our annual celebration of the arts and potluck. Full details on page 22 of your bulletin. Normally at this time in the service, I welcome Deacon Alicia Anderson of Lutheran Campus Ministry, but she is out of the country uh, visiting family this week, and so there is no student luncheon today, but we do have representatives here to greet students. There's Earl, why don't you raise your, Earl Leibarger is here as the designated representative, giving his best Queen Elizabeth wave. Well done, well done. So there's Earl. Well, friends, uh, it's going to be a, a busy and joyful day today. We'll see if Grandpa can hold it together. We begin worship with our confession and God's gracious forgiveness. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Please kneel or sit. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together in Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning as we rise is this joyful Easter tide. For those of you worshiping at home, it's number 391 in your Evangelical Lutheran worship hymnal.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and blessing and glory. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated, and good morning, Susan and Spunky. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Spunky. Peace be with you, Spunky. He says, and also with you. <laughs> yes, Spunky, that is what we will say later in the service after we say the prayers of the church. <clears throat> Did you know that is also what Jesus said to all his disciples when he appeared to them after he was resurrected? Well, we will hear about that in the gospel lesson for today. Jesus said, peace be with you. Oh, that is not what you would say, Spunky? What would you say instead? Huh, you would say, ta-da, look at me, I'm alive. <laughs> no, Spunky, Jesus didn't say ta-da, Jesus said, peace be with you. See, at the time Jesus appeared to them, the disciples were afraid, and Jesus told them there is no need to be afraid. He told them they should have faith, and if we think about it, if we have faith, it can give us peace. You know, Spunky, another thing in the gospel lesson that Jesus talked about 
that can bring about peace is forgiveness. Jesus told his disciples to teach repentance and forgiveness. What is repentance? It is when you realize you did something wrong and say you're sorry and ask for forgiveness. And then with forgiveness comes peace. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Spunky said he and his sister Punky Monkey had a fight after he ate her piece of banana cream pie. Hmm. But then he said he was sorry and made her a whole new pie, so now she isn't mad at him anymore, and there is peace in the house again. That's good to hear. Please pray with me. Dear God, thank you for Jesus who brings peace. Please help us to find peace through faith and peace through forgiveness. Amen.
The first lesson is a reading from Acts chapter 3. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this point, or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety, we have made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, and the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, who you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteousness one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him his, this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The psalm is Psalm 4. Please sing responsively by whole verse. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, make me rest secure. The second lesson is a reading from 1 John chapter 3. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteousness, just as he is righteousness. Here ends the lesson. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. 
while in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Well, friends, there are a lot of ways to get an education. High school, college, trade school, graduate schools. But it seems like the most effective and lasting lessons we learn from experience. Now, I hope that last Monday, in the midst of all the eclipse hype, none of you learned a hard experiential lesson about the dangers of staring at the sun. Over the last week or so, uh, my wife Linda and I have been remembering some lessons we've learned, and she had one in particular that she reminded me of. We were living in Maine and trying to housebreak a very active border collie puppy. When the puppy needed to go, we had to get her out of the house ASAP. One winter day, nature called for our puppy, and Linda rushed to get her outside. Daughter Annika, then a preschooler, insisted on helping, but of course wasn't dressed for the cold. Well, as you can guess, the puppy wasn't going to wait, and so Linda had to get the, the dog out into the wintry weather as quickly as possible. Annika was not pleased at being left behind, and so she registered her displeasure by locking the door behind Linda. It took major diplomatic negotiations and more than a few threats before she let Linda back inside. And so from that time forward, every time Linda took the dog outside, and I emphasize every time, she took her house key with her. Experience is the great teacher of life. And Addison, we're going to teach you all of those tricks. (laughs) Friends, experience is, it, is what it's, is at the root of what's happening in today's first lesson from uh, the Acts of the Apostles. Now, these verses are taken out of context, so let me give you the backstory. Peter and his colleague John were at the temple in Jerusalem when, at the temple gate, they encountered a man who was lame from birth. The man placed himself there to beg for money. When he asked the disciples for a few coins, Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And then Peter took the man by the hand and helped him to stand up. Newfound strength surged through the now healed man who, like a young fawn, began to leap and walk and praise God for his miraculous healing. Now, the problem is that the people who saw the healings began to give the credit to Peter. They stared at him as if he was the Messiah, and Peter would not tolerate it. Why? Well, experience, of course. Peter knew better than anyone else that when he relied upon himself rather than Jesus, disaster inevitably ensued. And so, informed by his experience, Peter lit into the crowd for putting their faith and trust in him rather than in Jesus, the true author of all blessings and the true healer of the man at the gate. Peter spoke with the conviction of a man who had made that very mistake himself and never wanted to repeat it again. Peter implored the people to learn from his experience and to place their hope, their trust, and their faith in Christ alone. Now, friends, I invite you to reflect on your own experience. When you have placed your hope, trust, and faith in people, places, or causes other than Christ, how's that gone for you? I know it hasn't gone well for me, and I suspect 
you've experienced very similar results when you've tried to go it alone. So let's take Peter's experience and his counsel to heart and place our hope, our trust, and our faith in Christ alone. Now, admittedly, doing so is a daily challenge. Sometimes the false Christ comes from people who hide behind a veneer of religion and pious talk. Self-appointed gurus and prophets with slick marketing plans clamor for our attention, our devotion, and ultimately our cash by manipulating God's word and playing upon our fears and our insecurities. Reject them. Hope, trust, and have faith in Christ alone. Even more common is the seductive and much subtler siren call of the secular world, which encourages us to pour our hope, our trust, our faith into worldly accomplishments or recreation, the size of our investment portfolio or the extravagance of our lifestyles. Such things in isolation are not sins. They're good things, at least until they become idols that replace Jesus in our hearts. We are to hope, trust, and have faith in Christ alone. Now, sometimes the culprit who causes us to turn from Christ isn't some charismatic personality or worldly temptation, but the person you see staring back at you in the mirror. Don't get me wrong. Surely it's good to be resourceful and to be self-sufficient, but our pride can cause us to rely far too much on ourselves and not enough on Jesus. After all, that was Peter's problem, wasn't it? An experience taught him hard lessons. Today, he reminds us to hope, trust, and have faith in Christ alone. Now, we also get off track when we think Jesus is too busy or too important to care about our problems. So we isolate ourselves. Or maybe we think Jesus might help us, but only if we've prayed with just the right words or have somehow proven our worthiness. We just end up worn out from unnecessary guilt or exhausted from the impossible pursuit of perfection. Instead, consider the man at the temple gate. What did he do or say to prove his worthiness to be healed? What perfect prayer did he offer? Nothing. And yet Jesus heard him and healed him purely out of love and grace. Now, I cannot promise you that Jesus will solve your problems just as you wish. Sometimes, instead of yes, Jesus' answer is no, or maybe later. Now, speaking from my experience, I know how hard that can be. But I also know that whenever Jesus has answered my prayer in another manner or at another time than I requested, his way and time have always proven to be better. Hope, trust, and have faith in Christ alone. Now look, here on Sunday morning, I'm sure this all sounds so easy, so neat, and so tidy. Of course, life is much more complicated than that. So as a practical matter, what can we do when we find our hope, our trust, and our faith wavering? Remember your baptism. Today's the perfect opportunity to do so, isn't it? Three baptisms today. Now, these three babies are undeniably beautiful and wonderful, but they have no worldly accomplishments or spiritual achievements that have earned them Christ's magnificent gifts of forgiveness and salvation. It's pure grace. It's pure love. It's pure gift. And so as you remember your baptism, let it humble you and remind you that your powers, talents, and works do not entitle you to anything from Jesus. Everything he gives you is pure grace, pure gift. Your baptism stands as a cautionary reminder 
to hope, trust, and have faith in Christ alone. But as you remember your baptism, you can also rejoice in the good news that in this sacrament Jesus has proclaimed to you and to, and to all the world that no matter what labels the world tries to affix to you, you are beloved. In Jesus' eyes, you are priceless. He embraces you and never tires of hearing from you. So never fall for the lie that he's too busy or too important to care about you. Hope, trust, and have faith in Christ alone. Now, of course, our baptism doesn't prevent us from making mistakes. We are human after all, and like Peter, we will all have moments when we sin, lose our way, and fall. Yes, even little Drew and Addison are going to have their moments. Although when I teach her to lock the door behind mommy, that won't be a sin. <laughs> Friends, when that, when that happens, and it does happen to all of us, do not despair that all is lost. And don't run away from God in shame. We aren't defined by those stumbles, but by our willingness to get back up again. And we can do so because our Lord is always ready to extend a hand of grace, forgiveness, encouragement, and love to help us get back on our feet. So in a world of tempting alternatives, don't seek your salvation in mere people, things, or causes. Remember Peter's experience. Remember your baptism. And hope Trust and have faith in Christ alone. Amen.
invite the congregation to be seated, and I hope you'll participate in our baptism today. Uh, small page 227 in your hymnal, the red hymnal. You can follow along with that. Let me introduce everybody up here. It's a cast of thousands today. We'll start with Frank and Kayla and their daughter Lila, and this is Andrew uh, Francis, who goes by Drew, and uh, we've got their sponsors. We've got Jake and Jamie up here. Now, I, I got to officiate at their wedding. I baptized this one, and now this one. It's a family affair. This is pretty exciting. And then I think you've maybe met these guys before. My daughter, Annika, who's really great with doors. My son-in-law, Drew. <laughs> And I can't let it go now. And my dear granddaughter, Addison, who's already saying this sermon is too long. And this is Filippo, who's one of the sponsors, an old friend from college. And then uh, Drew's sister, Emma, is watching today from Hawaii, where she's a nurse. Yeah, she's one of the sponsors as well. Baptism is full of uh, beautiful symbolism as well. Drew is wearing a baptismal gown now that uh, goes back four generations in his family, and we're just starting a new tradition in our family. Addison's baptismal gown was made by Grandma Linda, and hopefully will be passed down from generations to generations. Uh, a few of you have asked about my stole. This is the first day I've worn this one. This is a brand new stole I made for this day. This is the cross of St. Cuthbert, on whose day I was baptized, March 20th, many, many decades ago. And so we have this opportunity to, uh, to connect my baptism to these baptisms. We'll also have water, just common water that mixed with God's word does miraculous things. And then we'll also be pouring in a little water that comes from the baptismal site in the River Jordan where Jesus was baptized. Uh, it is a working river, and so trust me, <laughs> we boiled it. Uh, but that's good water too that reminds us of our connections broadly within time and space and within the church. Friends, in baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Frank and Kayla, Drew and Annika, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Andrew and Addison baptized into Christ? If so, please say, I do. As you bring your children to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with them among God's faithful people, bring them to the word of God and the Holy Supper, teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, place in their hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture them in faith and prayer so they may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Drew and Addison grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, please say, I do. Now, sponsors, do you promise to nurture these wonderful children in the Christian faith as you're empowered by God's Spirit? and to help them live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so, please respond, I do. Now, people of grace, this is a tall list in baptism that these parents are promising to do and the sponsors are promising to help make happen. And so we have a stake in this. It's part of our job as well. People of God, do you promise to support Drew and Addison and pray for them in their new life in Christ? If so, I want to hear a big resounding, we do. And I know they mean it when they say it. And so, Addison, as you sing a solo, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? The congregation is invited to stand as we continue to uh, profess our faith as well. Do you believe in God, the Father? I believe in God, the Father, the Spirit. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation can be seated. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Water? Drew, you want to pour that and drink? We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Well timed. Yeah. All right. Drew, come on over here, buddy. Lila, if you want to help, you can too. You can reach in there in that water with me. Andrew Francis Schubert, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Whoops. Let me wipe this up. Now you're going to keep this. You hold on to this. And now I, let's do the uh, baptism and the anointing of Drew, and then we'll move on to Addison. We'll do it in some sort of order so Grandpa doesn't get mixed up here. Friends, join with me. You belong to Christ in whom you have been baptized. Alleluia. And now let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth. Cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Drew with the gift of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Andrew, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. All right, temporarily hand him back to you. And my dearest, here we go. This is the day she decided Grandpa was not trustworthy. <laughs> Addison Grace Dellert, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. See, that's yours. Try to keep it all straight here. Friends, join with me. You belong in Christ in whom you have been baptized. Alleluia. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Addison with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, now and forever. Amen. Addison, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Friends, this oil stock, I should say, is the very same one I anointed my father as he was preparing to die. Promises made, promises kept.
I get to play with fire. <laughs> Drew, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Addison, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. I hope you'll light these every year on April 14th to remember this day. Friends, let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome, we welcome you, you into, into the body, the body of, Christ of Christ and, and into the mission, the mission you share. share. Join, Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. All the world. Now let's see if I can pull this off. You can do it. I got oh, it. There you go. Friends, I want to invite you to uh, welcome the newest members of the body of Christ and the family of Grace Lutheran, Addison and Drew. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations. As you heard me say in the sermon, it's vital that we remember our baptism and we remember that with cooperation from others. So I'm counting on you to help them remember this day. That day when Christ said publicly what has been true from the beginning of time, I love you, I claim you, and I will never, ever let you go. Amen. I invite the baptismal families now to be seated, and uh, if I can get these babies pried out of my arms, which is no guarantee, we'll continue with the prayers of the church. While we're doing that, I just want to remind you all, as I did with the 9 o'clock baptism, that you can light that candle every year on the anniversary of baptism unless the dog eats it. That's my dog story, so my advice to you is please don't keep the baptismal candle anywhere that a dog might decide that it is food. Because then you can't light it, because it isn't there anymore. <laughs> I invite you to rise in body or spirit as we pray. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and those in need of good news. O oh God, our Holy One, you feed our deepest hungers. As we share the holy meal that is the body and blood of Jesus given for us, lead us to share all that we have and find abundant life in generosity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, our creator, you bring forth all life on earth. Calm storms bring water to parched places and protect the climate, that this planet would sustain life in all its variety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, our savior, you offer wisdom and guidance beyond all human knowledge. Instruct lawmakers, judges, and elected officials to make decisions grounded in your justice and care for all people. We join the World Council of Churches today in praying for the people of Belarus, Moldova, Russia, and Ukraine. And we continue to pray for lasting peace in the lands where Jesus walked and in the entire Middle East. May your peace surpass our understanding in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, our elder, you care for all your children. We give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give thanks for those who have been baptized into your kingdom this day. For Land, Patrick McShay, Addison, Grace Dellert, and Andrew Francis Schubert. May your spirit kindle in them your grace and your faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, our caregiver, you care for all you have created. Encourage those who are in times of transition, facing the loss of old ways and routines, anticipating change. Guide those who journey in grief and uncertainty. We pray for those recently hospitalized and those on our prayer list. We pray the prayers that have been placed at our cross for Maria and Louis Rotino, for the Terzian family, for Brooke's battle with addiction, for healing for Zach, for those traveling this weekend, for healing for a hip, for relaxation for loved ones and elders. And we also pray now the prayers that we name aloud or in our hearts.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, our center, you bring all people together in you. Help us to remember our identity and purpose in our ministry and move us to love our neighbors as ourselves, to share in beloved community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, our resting place, your son Jesus promised that we are held in your love forever. We remember our beloveds who have died. As we remember and share their love, comfort us when we mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. And now we're going to share that peace that we were just talking about during the ministry moment today. And I'm going to invite all of you, after we share the peace in the room, to turn and face the back wall where you see faith, joy, and glory and wave because we usually have anywhere from one to 300 people who watch this service via our live stream and they are watching right now and they tell me that they wave back when we wave. So friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace, friends. and body or in spirit. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, 
for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Creating God, you made the wonder that is the earth, infusing soil, sky, and sea with life, energy, and glory. Though we look upon you with eyes dimmed, you gaze upon us with eyes full of grace. Breathe new air into our choking lungs. Breathe life out of toxic soil. Turn polluted seas into the waters of baptism. You rolled away the stone to bring us face to face with your resurrected son. Recreating God, when your son came to restore your purpose for the earth, he used the fruit of your abundance and the food of human labor. Come among us through the Holy Spirit and make us holy in the sharing of this bread and wine and make them to be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Ever creating God, your son Jesus invited his disciples to touch his risen body. Come now in the power of your Holy Spirit to touch all that is still to be resurrected. Touch all who live in fear, who know daily hunger, who carry wounds and scars. Touch all who have yet to see the salvation you have brought through your Son, who are stumbling in their faith, who are disbelieving and yet still wonder. Make us one in you, united with the saints in the coming of your kingdom on earth as in heaven, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. A word about communion this day for those of you who are visiting. The ushers are going to direct you to come forward. You guys on this side are going to go this way with Pastor Shul. Folks over here are going to go this way with me. We have traditional wafers, and we have gluten-free wafers. We have wine, and we have grape juice. If you do not wish to receive communion, you're still invited to come forward and receive a blessing in the name of Christ. And if traveling forward is not your speed today, that's okay. Just tell the ushers and we will bring the body and blood of Christ to you where you are. Friends, the risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table. Thanks be to God.
Please rise in body or in spirit. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Shepherd and God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection hope, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Friends, we have had a fabulous morning, and it's already 20 of 12. So in the interest of everybody's lunch plans, we're only going to sing verses 1 and 2 of our closing hymn, which is 366, The Strife is Over, The Battle Done, verses 1 and 2 only. Rejoice and be glad.